can I tell you this? Kanongoma, 10 people have been arrested for the killing of Hussein. It's not only those five accused. Oh, it's because those five accused, I was there to make noise about them. Exactly. Makosonke was an, 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 an accused for this. Kwabin oh, was accused for this and was tortured. Kwabin has got a case against Tabo Kininda for oh, I'm telling you, guys. I don't think Ababona, they think they know this case. There's no one who has this case better than I do, except Abu Kininda, because they are the directors of this movie. Hey, I mean, I'm, I'm following me. this guy, exactly. I'm following their every move. I'm saying, Mina, I can list you a lot of people who are involved in this. They've bought a lot of people. There's a guy who got tellers, Osebenza, a Rustenberg. He was also arrested for this. Oh, I well. It's more than 10 guys from my hometown who were arrested for the killing of Hussein. And then when they go on and try to cook their story, it doesn't add up. Untanzi was not part of this. They were there for Uma Chimba killings. They found Untanzi and thought we were because Hence, they're saying he had a gold tooth. That's the person who had a gold tooth. Untanzi, she could be a bad person. They were looking for somebody else. But Sika Untanzi, they assumed it's him. That's, that's why Untanzi, as somebody said, Aksuye oh, Lwesi But then okay. they ignored that yes. Okay. So, upon him being arrested, that's when things started to be hard for the accused. They, they were so stressed. Like, they, they lost hope. Because Advocate Defo introduced Case 375 to us. And he revealed everything that is on Doggett's case 375. So mm -hmm. that when they get shaken, mm -hmm. that when they saw would know, we're no longer safe. Once that key, that, that document, that docket is implemented or is being in court, we are all going down because we try to hide that docu that docket into an extent that the people who investigated that docket were arrested. They were told that they were defeating ends of justice. Whereas, I, I cannot run away from the fact that Uki Ninda is controlling in the police department. Whatever he says goes. It's him and Peggy because this is the year sketch, this thing that is happening on the Meiwa case. It's those two guys' sketch. It's, it's them who wrote this sketch, who wrote that movie that we acting and caught recently. Wait. It's, 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 it's a case by Ukwabini against U Ukininda. I, I'm not sure if it's directly Ukininda or Abantu Baga Kininda, but there is a case being opened for them, for, for, for Ugum Chochara. They tortured that guy a lot. Okay. Yeah, it seems like a lot. Um, this conversation will be recorded for YouTube purposes. Do you consent to that? Yes, I do give consent. Uh, your name is the name on record? My name is Singabile Mapisa. Okay. Today, I don't want to distract you. Um, I'm giving you free um free space free a time you're just gonna take us through how because i think a lot of people don't understand this mm -hmm. we saw advocate therefore being involved in the Mayua case yes. and uh, he will trend a lot also because of his character he's not a guy that gets in there and just for the sake of adding numbers but he's that type of a guy that He's got a very yeah, strong personality. So he got into the Mayua case. And uh, yeah, there were some things, there were things that happened. And he got us, look, he, he exposed us to 375. And uh, fast forward, therefore he's removed in the case and blah, blah. But the question is, who is Def of and when did advocate Def for? began working on the Mayua case and how come who called therefore was it on pro bono who was paying therefore was it was therefore paid by legal aid pro bono was therefore paid privately like uh what was 
devil contribution in the Meiwa case. I just want you to take us through without being disturbed. I will ask you questions there and there. Okay. Um, this is how I met Advocate Defo. After I posted on all my social media platforms about the case, he tried to reach me, uh, but his luck was through Senzo's bigger brother, and then he introduced me to Advocate Defo. I got to know him. We spoke, I think we spoke more than three months before he took over the case. Uh, he was just getting to know more about the people he was going to represent. And she was like, no, I know these people didn't do this. I know who did this. I've been doing this case privately without knowing that one day I'll be in contact with the sisters, or with the sister of the scapegoats or something, without knowing there'll be people who will be used for this case. I've been investigating it just for the like of it, you know. He was just following the case and everything. I don't know for what reasons, but those reasons helped because him taking over the case or him representing four of the accused made it easier for the whole of South Africa to understand what transpired on that night at the Kumalo house. So I got to know him. Uh, we met, our first meeting was in Pretoria, the University of Pretoria. We made a press conference there. He introduced himself. He told us how far he's went with the case. And then he gave me time to speak. He told me to tell how do I know the accused, how were they involved in this case, how were they arrested and everything, and their background and all that. Okay, we made that press conference there. It reaches a lot of South Africans. A lot of people started to see the case on the other side because most people believed that those five accused were the right suspect, the way Begitele made that announcement on the day when he he had those five guys. So a lot of people who didn't understand or who didn't follow the case were convinced that finally they would, the intruders have been found. Okay, therefore cleared all that on the people's mind through that press conference. Going forward, Defo took over, represented the four of the five accused, Pro bono, he was not demanding any money or any payment from anyone. The only thing I would do would be assisting in petrol here and there. And um, the only money that was needed was for transcripts. Transcripts is a must that you pay for them. You pay that amount for transcripts, I paid that amount. I didn't even bother any of the accused family to ask for that money. I just deposited the money to advocate differ. He went on, read the transcript, and was ready to take the case. He took over, did everything. He was quite good. Uh, he opened a lot of people's eyes and minds about the case. He had all the evidence in hand. Okay. Wait. I just yes. want you to explain something. Uh, I know you said, look, I stopped you when you were saying he had all the evidence at hand. When yes. you continue, we'll start there. But please explain the word. Uh, transcript to a person or to a layman out there, he's or she's wondering what is a transcript. Uh, I don't know which easier way to explain the transcript, but transcripts are the papers that and it, 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 you collect the transcript from the court. It's either if the accused had a legal aid or a representative or defense, you collect those papers from that person. It's what describes the case. What oh, happened in the okay. case? In other words, we might we, we can say somehow from a police station it it will be a docket. Yes, in court it's transcript. All right. No, continue. You said uh, I stopped you when you were saying he had evidence in hand. Yes, he had all the evidence in hand of who killed our sons of Meiwa and how it happened. Okay. And then our second meeting with Advocate Defo, I think it was by John Clark's house, if I'm not mistaken. We had a meeting there, and then he explained everything to me of what happened in that house on that night. He gave me the full details, showing that he has been doing this case for quite a while. It was not only when he saw my post that he got interested into it. 
So he took me step by step of what happened inside that house that night, like as if he was there. You, you could see that he did his investigation thoroughly, so so he had everything in hand. And I'm saying he had all the evidence needed. So he showed me everything and how far he has went with the case. He even assured me that, no, I will acquit those five guys. And then that's when he was handed over the whole mandate. We said, no, advocate, we're happy with you. He started the case. And then he had some rumors that LPC wants to have a case against him. They want to remove him from this case. Why? Because they know he knows a lot about this case. Um, Tifa used to be a policeman back then, so he knows all the corruption in the police sector. He knows everything that's happening on the SAPS department. So they were well aware that he is going to reveal everything. Hence, they tried to stop him by all means. Hence, they have uh, they opened a lot of cases against him, cases that do not exist for that matter. So when Tifa had that, he said, no, to be on the safe side, let me elect an instructing attorney because the first thing that the judge said was hey, an advocate can't be standing alone. You know, they, they, they forced him to have an, uh, an instructing attorney or else he stops the case. So he, he pulled out of the case. So he said, no, I do have an instructing attorney. That's when he introduced who attorney Titi Choban. Mm, okay. Yes. But before you proceed, there is a name that was mentioned there, and I keep hearing a lot about this name. Uh, that name is John. Is John Clark or Clark? John G. I. Clark. Who is John G. I. Clark? Because it appears like he played an important role in the Mayua case. Okay, he used to call himself my bodyguard. That's his joking name. But John G. I. Clark is an international well-known social worker. He deals with such cases, gives advice. You know what the role of a social worker, right? So, yes, yes. He, is, he, is, he is a social worker. I don't know if I should say a senior social worker or what, but he's one of the best social workers in South Africa and internationally. So, so in this case, he works with whistleblowers as well. He assists whistleblowers wherever he can. Okay. I, I I can't say he's part of the whistleblowers as well because he do blow the whistle either. Okay. Yes. Well, after this call or tomorrow morning, please tell him that I wanna talk to him. Appears I know. like he's a appears like he's a good person. Like I've had a lot ever since I've been working on this case. I've had a lot about John Clegg, but yeah, yeah. Uh, he'll be very very happy to talk to you. Hey, he's very he's forever ready to talk about this case and his role. He's, he's played a huge role on this case, but if you were to ask him, he would say, no, I didn't do anything. I was just there, just providing transport, just providing places. He, he belittles himself on this case, whereas us who ha he have helped, we do see his role. It's, it's such a huge role. I, I really want to talk to John Clark. John Clark, if you're here, if you're listening to this interview, um, just know that I'm I'm I'm, I'm after you. <laughs> I really need to talk to you, and there's no way I'm gonna leave you, cause you are one of those people who played a key role in this. And this I say because uh, listening to Snobile, my pizza channel, the the lady I'm talking to right now, um, she's got a channel, guys. Please go and support her. Um, she does mention John Clark, so I really have an interest in John Clark. But then let's proceed. Now, uh, look, look, we, we, I stopped you where you were talking about how, uh, uh, look, look, how Tobani then was introduced to the Mayua case. Yes, and then he came with him to the case, and then I think our when I first met Mr. Titi, I'm not sure if it was in Hebrew or where, we met and then we get to know each other. We continued with the case together until the day when advocate they felt it was too much for him because the judge was not giving him space. He was not, he was always on his case, always harassing him in court. He's human after all. So she lost it and decided to withdraw in court. If you still remember that saga, yeah, she withdraw. Yeah. Yes, uh, I don't know. I don't wanna lie. It was such a sad moment for me and the accused. 
the accused were crying the whole of that week. They, they were so, so sad. But at the same time, they were understanding that he's also human. He has a heart. If someone keeps on dragging him like that, like like a five-year-old boy, uh, Advocate Defoe is a family man. He's way too old to be treated the way he was treated in that court by that judge, Maumela. It was so, so bad. So he took it by heart and withdrawn, but he left us in the safe hands of Titi Choban. He mm -hmm. said, no, let's let my instructing attorney continue with the case. Not knowing that they will, they will still come and try and arrest him in court and all that. So after his withdrawal, we spoke to him and told him, no, we understand everything, but please go on with the case. I'm the one who spoke to him. He went back to court and continued with the case. That when they pulled that stunt of arresting him in court, something that it was the first time for me to see, would a person can be arrested in court in front of the judge. So I, I, I usually think, I used to think that a judge is one rep a respectable man in court. Everything that happens in court has to start by the judge. But I was surprised to see who advocate as Oboshela a court in front of a judge. Okay, it's, it's, it's their law, so they say. They say he's been running away from attending his proceedings. My question was, how could Defo go to court and represent others, whereas he had his own cases to attend? Why would he risk his own cases for other people? It didn't make sense for me. But they know what they were up to. They took him in court, they arrested him, and then later on they investigated him, and then they said he's they, they they struck him off the roll. Their aim was just to remove him from this case. I, I cannot run away from the fact that Uki Minda is controlling in the police department. Whatever he says goes. It's him and Peggy because this is the year sketch, this thing that is happening on the Meiwa case. It's those two guys sketch. It's it's them who draw this sketch, who wrote that movie that we acting and caught recently. Wait. So Okay, continue, continue. I'll ask you. Okay. So, upon him being arrested, that's when things started to be hard for the accused. They, they were so stressed. Like, they, they lost hope because Advocate Defo introduced Case 375 to us and he revealed everything that is on Docket Case 375. So, mm -hmm. that when they get shaken, mm -hmm. that when they saw would know. We no longer safe. Once that key, that that document, that docket is implemented or is being in court, we are all going down because we try to hide that docu that docket into an extent that the people who investigated that docket were arrested. They were told that they were defeating ends of justice, whereas it is them, Abu Kininda, who are defeating the ends of justice. Okay, we are we are coming back to the uh, defeating the ends of justice. Uh, wait, you describe this thing as a movie. Yes. Uh, in the movie, there must be a director, there must be actors, a script writer, a cameraman, yes. <laughs> to name the list, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, why are you calling it a movie? Because uh, if you are saying it's a movie, then it means somehow we are just acting. Uh, it's not necessarily... Remember that a movie is a fiction. Something exactly. that one will think and write. But yeah. it's, it's not and, reality. And, 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 this one, and this one, I'll say, Upeikele is the producer, Ukeninda is the writer. Umamfundi says, it's Mokhone or Mokhale Nyaba Pambanisa. Mokhona. Is the, is, the, is, the, is the head of writers, that one. <laughs> She's the one who's the head of writers. And Ukeninda is, is just a writer. <laughs> and then the editor who George Baloy. Yes, I'm, 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 I'm running a production company, so I know such things. Eh? So uh, eh, eh, I don't know what to call the judge, <laughs> but he's got his role. I'll come to it some other time. But I can I'll show you. Upegi Kele is the producer, Kininda is the writer, and then the director is, yes, the judge might be the director, but I'm not sure about that. And then uh, the, the other editor is Uzungu. That's the Zungu guy who came to lie in court at two years he, 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 he is one of the editors that one. Wow. 
I don't know why you describe it, yeah, Zidi. Uh, guys, please forgive me for laughing. It's uh, just the way she describes it, man. I'm just kind of like feeling, look, in my mind, I'm imagining them indeed in a studio doing it. <laughs> sorry, people, guys, sorry. These people, Pella, will hold a meeting like a Pretoria Hotel every now and then. Omohola, Kininda, who's this driver? Is it Maseko or something? That person is driving the police vehicle. I know them. They don't know that I know them. They don't know that I know where they ho- they host their meeting. It's two hotels, Sentin Hotel and Pretoria Hotel. That's where they keep even their witnesses. That's where they cook their witnesses. What to say? That's why I'm saying this is a movie. And then you get the, the supporting characters are the witnesses. Wait. Um, you see now, you are uh, look, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are a lot of questions now in my mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. If there is a character that you introduce, a character that I criticize a lot, yes. and that character is called Zungo. Yes. I've never seen a man lying like that man. I don't know. Remember that I don't know any of the accused. Yes. But listening to what you are saying, I've ne- I can tell you this. I can sit here and tell you this. Never seen a man lying like that. So it's so funny that you get to confirm what I always said that Zungu is the best liar in this. I've never, like in the entire Meiwa case. I don't no, you, you know, the best liar was Musia. Uku Zungu is a good liar. The best liar was Babu Musia. And he ended up saying, Yo, Naki Khati. That was the bad lie. That man no, couldn't but, lie. But, that but, man can't lie even for his to save his life. He <laughs> just can't lie. Uzungu is a good liar. He can fabricate the story that one. As it was my pizza. Like my pizza was like, hey, Sisi, were you watching the case? It was that guy being shown on TV. Do you know him? I'm not to know, but I'm going to go to was the guy. I'm going to go to the court. I went. I'm going to go to the court. I'm even even no to be up. The only person who was the Uzungu La Payana it's Untuli Naya Akamaz Utum Twayele Umazi Mukumbona because Untuli once knew Umako Sonke no Kwabini, those love they are testifying about in court. Those are the people abaz Uzung. Na Boba Mazi two minutes, Bamaze twenty seventeen. Not so is it no twenty nineteen July. They told me that and Umako Sanke is one of the witnesses about Tata Baum Valela Pretoria Hotel, better you testify. Or figure about Kombi Suguchi Minangon Chigel. They said, no, we will call you some other time. That day, it's when U George Baloi, a Fikek said, Segati, we're having change of things, wara wara. He made a story that day, they didn't even sit in court. That's because they trusted Umako Sanke will sell those guys. And Umako Sanke is a man with a backbone from Ganongoma. Marcus Sonke is the one who is related to that Zungu. Yeah, I understand. So what he what my brother to go peg they even paid him The only thing he's gonna sell them is because he refused to sign the statement. Marcus Sonke is well educated. So he saw what if I sign the statement I'll be contradicting myself. What's, what's, what, he was like, what's the use of signing Vela? I know what's the don't worry. And then they were like, my business about the girl, and they were like, no, this guy is going to sell us. But no, take him back. And then that's how Wait, he was free. This thing is happening during the case. During the proceedings. That was last year. So I checked the day. You are trying to tell me that as the case is proceeding, investigation is continuing. Exactly. They are still investigating during the proceedings. They are still buying witnesses. The third part is they are buying Abu Putibanga Giti. I mean, I'll tell you this. They've got a backbone. They'll never sell one of their own. They've tried about five guys from Ganongoma. I can call them by names. Baba and and then one of them is no more. And they are busy using his name. That's that's the thing. Iyang yani sango zoom. Busy using it. Kamalga simpiwe simpiwe died a while back. After oh. being 
after being an accused as well on this case. Can I tell you this? Kanongoma, 10 people have been arrested for the killing of Hussein. It's not only those five accused. Oh. It's because those five accused, I was there to make noise about them. Exactly. Makosonke was an, 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 an accused for this. Kwabi oh, was accused for this and was tortured. Kwabi has got a case against Tabo Kininda for oh, this. I'm telling you, guys. They think they know this case. There's no one who has this case better than I do, except Abu Kininda, because they are the directors of this movie. Hey, I mean, I'm, I'm following me. this guy. Exactly. I'm following their every move. I'm saying, Mina, I can list you a lot of people who are involved in this. They've bought a lot of people. There's a guy who got tellers, Osebenza, a Rustenberg. He was also arrested for this. Oh, I well. It's more than 10 guys from my hometown who were arrested for the killing of Hussein. And then when they go on and try to cook their story, it doesn't add up. Untanzi was not part of this. They were there for Uma Chimba killings. They found Untanzi and thought we were because Hence, they're saying he had a gold tooth. That's the person who had a gold tooth. Untanzi had a gold tooth. They were looking for somebody else. But Untanzi, they assumed it's him. That's, that's why Untanzi, as somebody said, Aksuye oh, Lwesi But okay. then they ignored that yes. They wanted those people, Abagu Taxi Industry, those people, Abazi Wayo Ngagituguti, Abape, like they were targeting those people of 200. They are dangerous to the community. They are running taxis and, and all those things. I'm saying, I don't know if it's an experience. They know on in Texas there's always war, there's always shooting. So they assume definitely this will fit them. That's how Untanzi and Nage. They were not looking for him. Untanzi really? he was just being on the wrong place at the wrong time. There's something you said that caught my attention. You yes. explained and done the issue, I'm glad and it will clarify a lot of people's questions, right? Yes. But there's something you said. There is a it, case that was opened by who against who? It, it's, it's, it's a case by Ukwabini against U Ukininda. I, I'm not sure if it's directly Ukininda or Abantu Baga Kininda, but there is a case being opened for them, for, for, for Ugum Chochara. They tortured that guy a lot. If you are not yet subscribed, what are you waiting for? Come on, good people, because to subscribe it is free, to like the video it is free, to comment in the comment section below it is free of charge, to click the notification bell it is free of charge, to share this video it is free of charge, to watch this video until the end it is free of charge. Also, good people, I mean come on, to watch the ads it's free of charge and that's how you financially contribute to this YouTube channel. Speaking about financial contribution to the channel, you can join, become a member of this YouTube channel from as little as 20 rand a month. You can also uh, use the super thanks party. In case you don't want to do that, guys, there is a way where you can use my media company banking details to donate to the channel. And you know what I'm saying? We'll bring you more and also guys want to buy more equipment so the power is in your hands please do the honorable thing as we proceed okay yeah it seems like i've lost her yes sorry for that network was cutting all right all right uh, you, you said that there was going to be a problem with network so i understand yes. so this guy he opened the case against them Yes, so he said he will wait until this trial is over. He don't want to disturb the trial, but he wants them arrested. It's not only him; it's quite a lot of them. The others are not ready to talk about it. They are still feeling. They are feeling fear. Did, they, the, did they open a case against them? No, they said they will open once the trial is over. Once these guys they are inside, because they feel like if they are still outside, they are still danger to their lives. Wow. Yeah. So, guys, there's quite there's quite a lot about this case. You know, if, if if I were to sit on TV and talk about this case and everything, I would take the whole 24 hours. Hmm. We have diverted to therefore because of this uh, shocking revelation. How many yeah. cases have been opened against Geninda? I appears like there are many cases against this person, 
and uh, I don't think we are aware of those cases. Yes, there are a lot of cases. There are a lot of people who are opened cases against Ukininda. There's a lady there. I'll send you the screenshots once we're done on my inbox on the case against Ukininda, but I know. Advocate therefore opened the case and a warrant of arrest was issued, but Azanga Boshi Ukininda, no judge Baloi. We don't know how that happened. Sure. Yes. They decided to arrest him instead of Uboshebo, but Kishima Babo Payan, because they've got powers. Ha, ha, ha. All right. Yeah, I, this case, you should never conclude that you know anything about this case until you sit down and you investigate even deeper. That's when you will realize that, okay, um, really you know something about this case. Now, let's go back now to the man, therefore. Uh, yes. Unless you want to add something before we go back to death. No, we can go back to death. Um, I don't know where I stopped you. We diverted a little bit, but we were you... on the, so we were on how he introduced case three seven five, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, can you go back? Can you go back to that a little bit? Yes. So um, that that's when he was arrested after he introduced case three seven five, and then Titi took over. He continued and continued, and then I think the accused were not happy. I don't know how and why. That's what they said to me, and they said, no, we're selecting new people. And I think one of the defense was introduced by Utif, but others were like, no, Utif wants to withdraw without letting us know. So how can we trust somebody again he brings? What if that person pulls the same stunt? And then they say, no. Let us look for our own defense. They all came with their own defense. Honestly, I was not happy because I, I liked E.E. Rolska, Advoga, Attorney Chichi Choban, with him being introduced by Ugefa to us because he trusted him and he was still instructing him. Okay. But he, they had to, to, to do their own, they had to make their own choice in selection. So, mm -hmm. as before, was arrested then. And then Wapuma, by I think it was bail until last year August, where they sold him like Bamvalela and fully a jail, making sure he's not. Because even if he, even when he was not in this case, he was still assisting a defense with all the evidence needed. So I think they found that out. Then they created. Okay. Yes, they created a case. They said he it was malicious damage of property and assault. Patricia and I went to that building, we researched everything. The people of that building said they never opened a case against Tifo. Tifo never broke into apart their apartment. He just came through, took his furniture and left. There was no fight, nothing, no breaking in that they they saying he did. Yo. So, yes. And according to St. Patricia's investigation, uh, LPC found advocate Tifo not guilty of any of the charges pressed against him. But he gave um, the director, um, the writer of Kininda, wrote another case for Utefo last week, Thursday. Utefo, when he was supposed to be released, um, Kininda, I'm sure of the court, on another case, he says it's a 2021 case. And Utefo is not aware of that case as well. So it's their plan of still keeping him behind bars until this case is over. So, <sighs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Okay, continue. Yes. So, I think I've explained who Tifo is, how he's involved, how he was removed, and then maybe if the summer you felt I didn't cover, you may ask, and I'm willing to answer. You know, at some point, uh, I will take this from your own video, the video that um, you released on Friday. Yes. Um, I liked some of the points that you mentioned. You spoke about how you were fighting for death, how we were fighting for this case, or how at first this case was not televised, and yes. people they did not want people to participate in the case. What was Stefan's role for the case to be publicized? Okay, we were still in Boston by that time. Uh, they, they 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 chased out all the journalists, all the cameras. Tifo asked one question. Senzo is, was a legend, an icon, a 
public figure, why is his case private? What is it that you want to do to these guys privately? Uh, they didn't give him a straight answer. He said, no, there's no way that this case will be private. We want it on TV. It was a long war. We wrote a lot of letters to judge president, a lot of letters until we were approved. But Boxbeck said, no, our court is, is too small for the cameras and raw and all that. And this case is a high profile case, so they're moving it to Pretoria. Again, when it gets to Pretoria, they put the same stand, saying they don't need journalists, they don't need TV. Again, before us, why? Why is it? And it was Judge Maloney's way. He asked, who are you to tell us that? Let the judge decide. Unfortunately, the judge was on their side, but Utifo made applications because he knows the law. He made applications. He was up and down with applications. He also made me write letters so that we can be heard and say we want this case on TV. We want the whole world to see how cruel you guys are. That's how the case went to TV. And then on the first day of Utumelo's appearance, he was like, no, I'm not comfortable with cameras. Advocate asked him, why are you not comfortable with cameras if you are just a witness and you're here to tell the truth? He said, no, hey, people will kill me. Question was, why will people kill you if you are telling the truth? That's when I noticed, but no, Dumelo is hiding something. How was he going to say people will kill me? Who was going to kill him? Because the people he's selling are in, are in jail, are those five accused in court. Who is going to kill him? So you are telling me that there was no intention for this case to be broadcasted. Yes. Until before and I made up and down fighting, writing applications into an extent that they ended up saying witnesses won't be shown on screen. That's that was the agreement. That witnesses at first they said even their voices won't be heard. I again before started fighting and saying, why are you hiding their voices? You want them tomorrow to say, no, I didn't testify, I didn't do this, and then it, 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 they will be believed because nobody heard their voices, nobody see, they see, has seen them. So we said, no, their voices will be heard, but yes, their faces will be hiding if they are right, after all. So according to you, what would have been the effect of this case not being broadcasted? Those five guys will be been convicted without anyone knowing, and people will be convinced that the real killers have been arrested. Huh. Oh, and, and sad part is some of them would have been killed inside. They would have been given poison just so nobody will see, or just so they won't tell anyone that they are being convicted for something they're not aware of. When, as you were fighting uh, outside, what were some other reasons, maybe known to you, and also to five local reasons that therefore might have communicated with you, which these are the reasons why I'm fighting for this case to be broadcasted. Besides the fact that, obviously, since I'm a year, uh, was a public figure. Um, we no. all know that, and uh, let me put this on record as well that yes. I did not know who, uh, her, her girlfriend, Kelly Kumalo. I know I knew Senzo Meiwa, so I just want to say this to somebody there. I mean, I did not know Kelly Kumalo. Yes. I, I, just, I will hear about her music there and there, but I did not pay attention to her until oh. the death of Senzo oh. Meiwa. How can you not know her when she goes around telling people that she built Usenzo? She's the one who made Senzo to be known. <laughs> I, will, I will tell you this. <laughs> Me, I followed the local, local football. Yeah. I can tell you this, that the people that were competing uh, in the Bafana Bafana jersey, and we knew them to be friends. It was Itumelin Kune uh, from Kara Chief. It was uh, Senzo Meiwa from Orlando Pirate. I followed the football. Like, come on, come on. <laughs> Come on. So 2008, I'll give it to be precise. Um, I remember watching a, an MTN, I think it was won by Carlos. It's either 2008 or 2009. I was already a football fanatic. I knew very well Senzo Mejiwa. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so it's a, it's for somebody to say, we knew him because of her. Aye, it's an exaggeration. It's a lie, in fact.
So the reason for me that I wanted the case to be broadcasted on TV was that I knew that it was a, it was a movie. It was just a, I don't know if it's, I'd say it was just a play. So I needed the whole world to notice how cruel our justice system is, because I was very very certain that those five guys didn't kill Usain. So I wanted the whole world to see how cruel our justice system is and how poor it is. Mm. Yes. But then let me use a privilege or privilege information, if I may say. Yes. Um, at some point you were not with Uma Pisa, which is accused number four. Uh, guys, it is accused number four in the Maywa case. So yes. Mobile is her sister, the one I'm talking to right now. Uh, at some point you were not with her, with him, right? I'm trying to be fair. How, yes. how is it that you would have known that you didn't do it? Okay, after, uh, before even they appeared on TV, he told me that he heard that he's being connected to a case he's not aware of. So Umar Pisa, after he was present, he was very honest with me with everything because he knew that without me, he's got no one. So he told, she, he told me very well that, Sissy, I won't lie to you. I don't know this. I was not there. I don't even know that sense. I don't even know that house. So what I did is I went around the streets of Phosphorus. I I risked my own life. I went there, asked people what happened on that day. And then I think only about three people answered. The others didn't even want to talk. They said they only said we don't want to die. We don't know what you're doing. We don't know if you're recording us and all that. And then those that spoke, that, those that answered me said, during the incident, we never see anyone coming in or anyone coming out except when Longe was running out after the gunshot. So that's how I knew there were no intruders. It was an inside fight. Again, after speaking to Uspiso, uh, he sent me that uh, record of his father explaining that yeah, now he was called by Utumelo saying, How long we said to Bulusenzo gay put? That's when I knew Uti, my brother is not involved. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Yo. Oh, this case is very difficult. There are a lot of things that we don't know. A lot of them. A lot of I would I, as I'm telling you, I would write a movie about this case. If I, I had to, I would write a movie and maybe make it a fiction, but I will write a full movie about this case. Hence, I'm saying it's a movie. Do you think that at some point the untouchable one will ever get arrested? Yes, they will. No one is above the law, even if they think they are. And in the end, the truth has got its way of revealing itself. And I can assure everyone listening to this that the end is near. In the days of playing with people's lives are near. They, they are coming to an end. And he can feel that as well. Aibo, what a strong word. You're saying he can feel that? Yeah, he is feeling the heat. Why, can... Why are you so confident? <laughs> that is very for another day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not going to ask you then, because you even know where they hold their meetings. So I, I will not ask them anymore. <laughs> Every move, and the sad part is my phone will tell them that I'm in Dubai or I'm in China. I'm always two steps ahead of them. When they try to hack my phone, it will tell them that I'm in Dubai. It will tell them that I'm in China. Whereas sometimes I'll be in Desert, whereas sometimes I'll be in Cape Town, they'll never know where am I. But my phone will... Tell them that I'm outside of this country. Hey, guys, let's not go there. Fine. <laughs> yeah. Look, you, you, have, have they tried really to help you? They tried, and I was, that was caught by Advocate Defo. We were on the call with Advocate Defo. There was someone on the call. You know, you, you know, right now, as you're speaking to me, you can hear my background, right? Yes. And I can feel your background as well. So if there's a third background, we can hear that. Default knew my house then. He knew I didn't have an aircon. He was somewhere where there's no aircon. But on our conversation, there was an aircon. Someone was in an aircon. You know, if 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 Unish was in Lako, Default said, you know, now we've got a third person on this call. And he started insulting that person and said, you can listen. And he spoke whatever he wanted. 
third part for that person was figu kwehlela you can't hide it <laughs> so, i'm telling you Tifo can attest to this and he's the one who here to see there's someone on our call i don't know if it's that person or kwehlela or wange umuntu esasimamele wa kwehlela or what but government and Tifo was like is that you coughing i said no he laughed and said i told you we are three in this call yo eight Yeah. Not capable of anything I can say. They are very dangerous. I won't lie. I, I am risking with what I'm doing, but one had to do it. Because if nobody stood, if I didn't, and they are saving for something they do not know. I, I, I see with the others who have got their own case. What about that innocent guy who is mixing his life? I heard that Ndanzi. Right from school, he went to work in the mine. Yes, he started working in the mine back in 2009. He was very young. I think he was 17, 18, somewhere there. Immediately after matric, the same year, I think after his last paper of matric, he went to work. Dan is not lying that he was never involved in this whole thing. He's not lying. Dan's, as he's saying, Mapisa, he don't know the Mapisa Muta Lagunun Dan's. Oma Pisa only knows about my room and put it Nakona, not that personal, just because we are in the way you do my That's how we know each other. As I've been explaining, Undanzi, Mane Labantu, and Undanzi, Umakela Negas Bia Ekai. That's the only person I'm as you know, I assume, and I could be a Muta. Undanzi is way too young, Labantu, very, very young. I got a ring age group, but that's a foundation of the school for that matter. But then, if you are saying so, then you are taking me back to Zungu story how he used to drink with them at hostel. And and then, never stayed in a hostel. Luntanzi, who in a hostel, I think, must not be in a hostel. I think it was 2017, 18, I was That's all. The things we keep in Goma, I really move. He was never part of the hostel. No. You are reminding me of his statement because in his own statement he said, he said like I'm I'm repeating exactly what he said. Meaning don't ask me anything about hostel life hostel life. Ask me about Zulu dancing. That I will tell because that is what I will go to the hostel for. And why look, he said that in court. Once yes. that is done, he will go back to uh, Rustenburg. Yes. So he was telling the truth. He was telling the truth. Only people once stayed in that hostel, but Mother Boshua, even in 2014, for so the case of Boshua, he was even in foster He was staying in Malvin, which was. Yes. Because Zungu is listening. What you what would you say to Zungu? Okay, all I can say is that is the only one from the he, family he he will reap what he's sowing right now. He will pay for what he did to those guys like because he has killed them. What he's doing is, is very bad to them. And and he she she sent a message to someone. I'll send you that message. Even if you can put it on screen with his numbers. He sent a message to someone who was also arrested for this. He said to that person, uh, Wait, is, wait. He was not intending to do this. Yes, but he was. was forced to do this. I'll send you that conversation. Wait. Yes. I heard after testifying. My sources told me that he, he got a promotion. He was in one of the police station, and my sources went there and confirmed that this is Zungu. They saw him at that police station there and there, and then they, they were just there to check. And then they said, yeah, this guy is here. And then he got a promotion. Just after, sort after testifying, I think he got a promotion of some sort. I'm not sure. Yes, and, and, and uh, my thought says that he was not working when he went to testify. So I think they promised him his job back because he was fired for some stuff. Wait a minute. Yes. 
Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, are you telling me and the people at home that Zungu was fired from the South African Police? Yes, she was fired, and she knows that very well wherever he is, Gutubenga Sasebe, they promised to reinstate him to sell those guys. And it seems like the position of Amitim is saying, that's why he goes around saying he was not intending to do such. Huh. Quite interesting. Mm -hmm. My, 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 my. Remember that the South African police service cannot just fire you. You can commit some of the mistakes, but they cannot just fire. I've got friends in the, in the South African police service. They, they will tell you, in the South African police service, you, you can't just get fired for that, for, for just for that. They will tell you that you can commit such some serious mistakes, and they will tell you that you will be asked that were you not trained for this and you say yes? And then they would be asked, didn't you do one, two, three, and you say yes, I did? And then the, the South African police service will discipline you based on what they taught you and, and look during the, the training. So, mm -hmm. me sitting here, I, I have the stats. I know the crimes that are most likely to be committed by members of the SAPS. Yes. I can tell you this, I know the crimes that are most likely to be committed by metropolis. Mm -hmm. And I can say this without fear and faith. Some of the crimes when it comes to stealing cars, when the police is involved, usually it's a metropolis. Exactly. But then, when it comes to docket and all the stuff, usually it's a person from the South African police service. Because they have worked with docket, they know how docket are to, are to be. Look, they know how this concept of a docket is where. When it comes to statement, when it comes to making a case disappear, you talk to the SAPS, those guys can make a case disappear because they understand. Uh, they understand how the things work. They, they can dribble a case and they can make it go away when it gets to court because that's how best they are. So when you say he was fired, I can name, I can, in my mind, I'm kind of like thinking the crimes that he might, have, he might have committed. And I can tell you, as you are listening at home or watching at home, it's not, it's usually not a petty crime that the SAPS will, will be meeting for. Mm -hmm. You find that the police drove, drove a, a state car when he was not supposed to, and he doesn't get fired for it. He can be reprimanded, but doesn't get fired for it. Exactly. It has to be something serious. That South African Police Service Department decides to fire you, and then you get reinstated. Mm -hmm. hmm. mm -mm. You see, I feel like this case. Don't you think that this case deserves more like a um, more like a what, what can I say? It, it deserves to be a study case for yeah. many institutions, and I don't think the South African institution will do justice to this. You know why I'm saying that? Why? Because they are quiet right now. They are not saying anything. Why will they in, come in and now want to do a study case over something that they did not add their voice? You know why um, I'm concerned about them adding their voice in this thing? Yes. It, it is because the case of Senzo Meiwa, I usually say, if you are an outsider, uh, in German, because I've got people in my channel that are coming from um, America, UK, Slovakia, China, um, Namibia, Switzerland, Botswana. In fact, I can tell you this: the second highest people that watch my channel are from uh, look, uh, it's Botswana. So I have the stats now that tells me how many countries and give me the stats. The second highest after South Africa is Botswana. So you you can see that there are people outside that they look at the case. Then the question that you need to ask is this case, my team, how can I, how best can I say this? It, it, it publicized itself South Africa. It tells a person who is 
in look international wanting to visit South Africa to say it decide it makes them decide whether they they are safe or not. So if there was a case that the South African police service needed to excel on, it is the, the case of Senzo Miwa because it sells South Africa. Mm -hmm. Now the the, the institution. Uh, 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 like every institution, I don't care whether it's a business, garage, whatever, need to add their voice in the case because what is happening, what we see with the Meiwa case, it is a reflection of the things that happen in society. If you decide to keep quiet, you are actually perpetrating, enabling criminal local uh, crime in this country so they are quiet right now it means they are comfortable they are happy to see crime going look growing why will they look now come and do it look and, and make this case a case that why should they be given such a privilege i feel like the international community they are not like companies that are in south africa so for them we give them grace because of that so it will be better for this case to be given to people in UK. In fact, I've had a lot of people in UK contacting me saying, you know what, uh, some other law firm, uh, they, they said they want to do, they want to take this case as a study case. Yeah. They wanna, so wh what's your take about everything Jay, here? Because it says a lot. I mean, you can just look at it from that perspective, but there's a lot that you can learn about this, this case. What's your take about that? Nami, I would say I wish it, it can go overseas now. They can give it to an international judge, not someone from South Africa, not someone who will buy us or someone who will be paid to cover something up. Because with both our judges, I'm, I'm not happy with their performances. They, they seem biased. As you can see, the judge is always attacking the defense, but sweet when it comes to the state witnesses. So I think maybe getting a judge from other countries will work wonders on this case. If South Africa is even sued, honestly, they failed this case. Because from where I'm sitting, this case was supposed to be dismissed a while back. There are a lot of things that does not correspond with the, uh, with the accused. The DNA is failing them. Everything. <laughs> it's not yeah. failing them. It is in favor of the defense. Less people misunderstand you. Now they caught you on TikTok <laughs> when you say it's failing them. They say, ah, you see. She said that the DNA is against their brothers, their no, brothers. So it, it, all, all the evidence is in favor of a defense. If, if it was a fair trial, that case would have been dismissed a while back. Okay, okay. How, how do you feel about people's participation? Um, I'm talking about people that are analyzing the case, uh, I know there are people on, oh, who belong to the left side and also people who belong to the right side. I'm asking this question because now you also have your own channel. Um, I'm going to link her video in the video description so that you can subscribe guys to her channel. How do you feel about YouTubers contribution? There are groups on TikTok. Uh, there are people on, 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 on Twitter. There are people on Facebook that does a commentary on this. How do you feel about our contribution, Jay? 90% um, of YouTubers and TikTokers are happy with their participation in this. They are doing quite a good job because 90% of them do see that this is a cooked up story. I won't say a case. This is a story, not a case, guys. So, sorry. 90% of people can see, and you can see which is, they are they, they, they are so tired of this. Yes, as much as it's giving them the content on a daily basis, but they do wish it would just be finished for the sake of those five accused. And then there will be that 10% on the left, some of them who got that brown envelope, and some of them who were born like that. I won't describe how, but they were born like that. You can't change them. They, they, they were born with mental disability. Exactly. They can't and, see their mental disability says they should not see the truth. So guys, I'm not insulting people who are born with mental disability. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the ones who you tell them this color is red and they can see it's red. 
they decide to see it as black. Those ones, I'm saying, they have a mental disability. Lest you take that part and then you run with it on TikTok and you say, I'm insulting people living with disability. Nope. I'll never do that. Yes. So those people are slow. It's, 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 those, it's those who were in grade 90 EF. <laughs> We can't run away from them. Those are the kind of people. I don't or there's an envelope about to shy away from the truth. Because even a five year old can see, you can see, Leandro, it's his door. It, it was cooked and the bottle of water served food, so unfortunately. Mpeg, of course, looks like spices are thinner taste. Uh, wouldn't you say maybe but but I mean, I'm not even a fool. So, but in in my age, wouldn't you describe it as the hypothetical look in my age? Exactly. Even <laughs> what they cooking, when I pega each on the side, and what they cooking, go for to each girl. Yeah, what did my age? I'm telling you. All right. What are your words to Lerato? Uh, Tefo's wife. Ah, uh, my sister. All I can say is that we are with her. We will fight this with her until the end. We will make sure who's me and Waki is out there. Because I mean, I always see. I for one feel like I'm also part of the reason why Tefo is arrested. If Tefo didn't show up and assisted me with this case, because we for revealing the dead in SAPS using this case. So. Mm -hmm. Everything that she's going through, we are here to assist her in everything. Jomoba Utifo was there to assist us. Okay. What would you say to people who are defending the accused and getting insulted on social media platforms? I'll say to them, keep strong, guys. Those people, Avantua, will come back crawling to apologize to you the day those five are being acquitted on this case. Because surely they will be acquitted. That is short thing. What would you say to people who have financially contributed in the case of Senzo Meiwa in support of anybody that was in need of support in defending the accused and everything or whether helping the accused? I'll say their help doesn't go unnoticed. We truly appreciate, guys. A lot of people have assisted me. A lot of people have assisted me in with contributions. I won't shy away from that, and they've been very helpful. Those donations have been very helpful. As some will say, hi, my manager, to me, it's quite a lot. I'm very thankful and appreciating. Now your child is crying. Let me just ask a few questions, and then we're done. How, 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 how look, um, what would you say how the families of the, the, look, the accused are feeling about people's uh, contribution financially? Maybe that's my few questions before we start. How would you say, I know some of them you are in contact with, in fact, all of them you are in contact with them. How do they feel about people's contribution in terms of finances in helping in this case? They are very, very happy because with this Bia and the Ntanzis, uh, the group of KZN who is in support of this ones to, took um, a hampers to those two families and they once deposited some certain amounts to both families' accounts. They were very happy. They did call me and say, no, there are people about Sibasaz Ngawe. They came with this and this and this amount of money. So they are very, very happy and appreciating. Uh, they look, 20 seconds. How do they feel about people supporting their, their accused? like 90% of the country supporting the accused? I can say they are very happy because well, they stay at home. They don't know what their kids are doing in towns. So seeing people um, telling that those guys are wrongfully accused, it gives them hope and they are happy to see that the whole world can see that their kids are being used as scapegoats. Okay, your last word then. Um, my last words is um, thanks to you, hey, for, for, for the word of advice in making me create that YouTube channel. It's really helping a lot of people. I've been getting um, very positive comments, and people are grateful. I did it eventually, uh, though I was not up for it. Now we have it took you some time to convince me to do it. 
because I felt like it would be like, hey, look, it's a funny crime. It's crime, it's fame. So I only wanted the justice. So, But you, you, your way of convincing me to do it made me realize that, yes, I do need it. So I'd like to say thanks to you, hey, and thanks to everyone who's in support of this case and the accused. Um, guys, please, let's go and support her channel. Uh, I want to see it on more than 10,000, and I, I, I bless that channel. I want to see it growing. Thank you guys for supporting her. Um, guys, thank you for supporting Lorato. Thank you for supporting Defo. Thank you for supporting all the accused, the families. Thank you guys for everything. Uh, as for me and Nobile, let's stop it here for today. We will shall continue when the time allows. No. I want to thank you for your time and everything, and may God bless you. And one day, I so wish that soon, if it was according to me, I will say by the end of March, I wish your brother will be acquitted in this case. I pray so too, and I hope it happens. Thanks, more. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.